Okay, so I'm going to go over some basic principles in this short video of how to make a data set. Uh, so you've probably worked in this kind of Excel spreadsheet before, right? Maybe you've used it to organize addresses or to keep track of some sort of information, maybe to keep a budget. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a short, small quantitative data set um, in Excel in workshop today. And this is also something you may be doing for your project. We're going to be analyzing our quantitative data in a program called SPSS, but um, you can do a lot of that data entry in Excel first. We can demonstrate some of the basic principles of how a data set works in Excel. So there are a few principles we're going to go over, um, and they're in this little worksheet. Oh, wrong one. Um, this one right here. And the first rule for data sets in general is that each case, each example of the thing that you're studying gets its own row. And all of the information about that case is in that row. So for example, if I'm studying individuals um, in a class that I'm teaching, I would make each different row, this would be the row for Casey, this is would be the row for Jimmy, this would be the row for Jessica, this is, would be the row for Maria. They would each, this whole row would have all of the information about Casey. Now, it may be that I'm not studying people, but I'm studying cities instead. So this first row would be about San Antonio. The second row would be about Dallas. The third would be about Houston. Or I'm studying social interactions, right, or books. So the first book would be um, where the sidewalk ends. And I would put all of the information about that book in this row. So all of the answers to all of the questions or all the variables that I have would all be contained in that one row. The second thing is that each column can only represent one variable with one number in it. So if I want to keep track of, let's go back to Casey, Jimmy, Jessica, and Maria, uh, maybe my first variable is their age, so how old they are, right? So they all filled out a survey and they said their age. Casey was 18 and Jimmy was 15 and Jessica was 25 and Maria was 32, right? So this is their age. All of the information that's attached to that person is in that row and only one variable can be in each column. Sometimes we have really complicated variables or really complicated survey questions that involve multiple possible answers, right? And then it gets a little bit more confusing. So say I asked someone on a survey, which of the following clubs they're a part of, right? And they give me multiple answers. So Casey says that he's in, alpha, um, let's see, he's in um, a two-vac and is in um, the Chinese Student Association. Jimmy is on the lacrosse team. I don't even know if we have lacrosse, but he's on the team. Um, Jessica is involved in math club and two back. So the problem here becomes is all of a sudden I have, um, and Maria is not involved in anything right now. So the problem here is that I can't do this. Um, I have to find some way of representing this information that doesn't have multiple things written in each cell, right? So I can't have both TUVAC and the Chinese Student Association. This particularly comes up with, um, for example, questions about race. So look at question number two here. It says, what race do you consider yourself? Please check all that apply. Some people just check white. Some people check white and black. Some people check black and Latina. Some people check white and other. Right? So we can't write in multiple races in that in that cell. So the club the club question, we'll have to kind of work that out. But say we were going to do this for racial categories, often one solution is to divide that up into kind of some of the most common answers. So for we might want to just have one of the things be like a two back, are you involved, yes or no? And they get a one if they're involved and a zero if they're not. Right? And so we can represent our data that way. And it could be that we'll just um, condense some of this information and be like um, professional clubs. Right? We have a huge data set. Some people are involved in clubs to do with their manager or for different professions. Um, Casey isn't. Jimmy isn't. But Jessica is. She's in the math club. 
right? So we can find some ways of representing what's going on, but we need many, many variables to make it happen. The same thing with race. Um, I can't just write race and then write in multiple races. So, for example, one way to deal with this is um, to put race white, and anyone who checked white, I would give them a one. And anyone who checked um, Latino, Latina, I would give them a one. This is like a whole new data table. And then for individuals who checked black, um, turns out Casey is checked both black and white. I have to do it this way. That's pretty messy. Um, there are some other options that we can, can talk about. Um, particularly if most of your sample is either white, non-Hispanic, or Latino or Latina identified. Um, there are ways of just kind of combining some of your variables, but we oftentimes have to be very strategic because we have to stick to the rule that in each column there can only be one number or one, op one variable, one option. Right, so these, I cannot keep these in my data set. These are not something I can analyze. The final um, is that in general we should try to use numbers and not words. Um, particularly, this words are not going to be very helpful beginning to like Excel. Sometimes we do want to use words. Like in this case, we're keeping track of people by their name. It's not a good idea in a survey, but we did it anyway. In this case, I'm trying to keep track of different cities, right? So I may want to keep San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, um, Lubbock, all the names of my cities there in the data set. But when I capture aspects of them, like their size or um, percent black in the city or um, sort of uh, pedestrian friendliness, they make a variable about that, I really should come up with a number to represent that, right? So it shouldn't be a word um, like small. It should be a number like 1.2 million. Right? Finally, you want to create a code book or a guide for what your um, how you'll be entering data into an Excel spreadsheet. Because there might be a problem that you you're like, oh, pedestrian friendly. We're going to rank these cities between four and ten. Well, San Antonio is not very pedestrian friendly. Dallas really isn't. But Lubbock, um, maybe Houston is a little bit more. Maybe Houston's a seven. Okay. I'm going to need to remember what these numbers mean, right? So I'm going to want to make another sheet where I say, okay, the first variable is going to be size, and I might say like population in 2012, this is the data that I have, right, in thousands, wherever I'm entering the data. Or I might say, you know, pedestrian, friendly, so it's ranking from 1 to 10 based on the following factors, right? So I need to kind of keep track of what everything is. I'll want this later, and it's just really important to do this when you're working on a group project especially because you will forget how you um, define some of your variables. So those are some of the key principles in how you make a data set.